What's up everybody, I'm back on your TV today making a polycarbonate windshield for my E92 drift car. And I made all the other windows for it already, the quarter windows and the rear window, but I still had to make a Lexan window and I never made a video about making the other windows. So I thought you guys might be interested and I'm going to show you how I do it at least. There might be a right way to do it and then there's this way and this is the way I'm showing you today. So the first thing I had to do was go down to the plastic store and get a piece of polycarbonate. So you'll notice this polycarbonate doesn't say Lexan on it. Lexan is just a brand of polycarbonate. There's lots of different brands. There's Markalon, there's Toughvac, there's Kyrex. They're all different brands of polycarbonate. So when somebody says they want Lexan windows, you can get polycarbonate and be pretty safe. So I placed the windshield down on the polycarbonate and because the windshield is curved, I wanted to have like kind of a bend in the polycarbonate so that I could trace it very easily. So I placed some two by fours underneath it and kind of lifted the Lexan up. So after I got it all traced out, I uh, went straight for the angle grinder and started cutting this thing out. So an angle grinder is probably not the best way to cut Lexan out because it melts it as it cuts, but uh, I don't like to use a jigsaw and a lot of people do use a jigsaw for this, but I just rather use the angle grinder and shave the melted bits off. You have to be super careful not to let the angle grinder come out of the cut area because if you do, you can put a big scratch across your windshield and uh, that will never be fixable. You'll never be able to get that out. So I always kind of angle the angle grinder away from the area that I'm going to use, that I'm cutting out, so that if it does start to run away or go somewhere, I can uh, at least not damage the windshield. And you can see, like I said, all this stuff melts, so I just take a razor blade and run it down there and cut it all off. Works pretty well. And look, at since I traced the factory windshield, fits pretty good. I mean, I mean, I really can't complain about that. I didn't have to make a cardboard template. I didn't have to guess at where the lines were gonna be. I just traced it, cut it out, threw it on there, and it fit almost perfectly. I did shave down a little bit because I think the stock windshield moved a little bit, but overall, yeah, I think that's that's all right. That's acceptable. I don't know if you guys saw, but to get those curved corners, I just traced like the lid of a piece of Tupperware or something to curve the corners. And what I really like is you get this nice gap at the bottom. So when you trace the factory windshield, you get that kind of curve in at the bottom. And uh, basically you get a perfect like OEM look and fit and finish to the new Lexan or polycarbonate windshield. Check it out. You know, when I start bolting this down, it'll have a nice curve to it. Nice gaps. Tape's holding it up there. Looks all right. So you can see here, there's actually this big black border on the windshield and it's a different uh, thickness all the way around the windshield. So we got to put that on the new windshield so it looks like an OEM windshield. So it looks proper, looks good. And normally what I do is I measure it on the stock windshield and I completely just draw all these different like dots where the length should be on every side and then I freehand connect them with the marker. So I'm not a pinstriper by any means. but it does tend to work better than tracing the ruler like I was doing there. So actually you get a nice smoother curve if you kind of rest your hand against the edge of the window and pull the pull the marker along with you. How's it going? So you can see here I'm using the lid trick again to get these nice perfect corners and curves. And the size of the lid you use makes a difference. You know, you can have a tight corner or a, a big corner. I tend to use bigger lids or bigger round things because I think it looks better than having a re super tight bend that you can barely even notice. And if you look, you know, this stuff already has a sticker on it. It has some protective film on it. So to mask it off, the easiest thing to do is to just cut this area out with a razor and peel the outside edge off. And you get the most satisfying sound in the world. 
but it's not really meant to be a mask. So I always take some blue painter's tape and tape around it. And it does give you this kind of like double edge look where you've cut it with the uh, razor blade, but I think it's better than kind of a bleeding edge look. And uh, that's what I do. And I just sprayed it here with some satin black paint from Home Depot. And I use satin black because on the inside I want it to be satin black. And because it's on the inside of the window, you know, the when you look at it from the outside, the polycarbonate actually makes it look glossy on the outside. So I get a matte finish on the inside like I like, and I get a glossy finish on the outside, which I also like. It makes it look very professional, very even, very good. So you can see, nice flat finish there. The painter's tape did a good job masking it off. And when you pull it back here, we get a pretty sharp line. It's not super sharp, but it's pretty sharp. Acceptably sharp, I think. Now, when you look at the stock windshield, there's also a curve top to bottom. And I need to put a brace in the windshield. FD has some specification for this brace. So I went ahead and matched the curve of the stock windshield with that brace. And then I'll use that brace to uh, mount my windshield against and actually pull that curve, kind of pull the windshield against that curve. So I'm sitting there working in my garage and I step back and this snake is in my driveway. And I'm not from Georgia, so this is the biggest snake I've ever seen in the wild. And I thought it was fake at first. I thought my neighbor was playing a joke, but it turns out it was a real snake and he just crawled under my uh, driveway and I haven't seen him since. But I guess that's a good snake to have around. It eats other snakes and eats everything else. So now we gotta drill this thing into the car. Well, I put the rivet down at the bottom and then I went to put the rivet nut up at the top and I almost drilled and rivet nutted the carbon roof to the car. So I would have drilled a bigger hole in the carbon roof to put the rivet nut through, but when I squeeze the rivet nut, it would have attached the carbon roof to the car permanently. So I'm pretty stoked I did the bottom one first and not the top one. I gotta remove the carbon roof to put this rivet nut in and all the subsequent rivet nuts too. So it's gonna, gonna be a pain. But basically I have to drill all the holes. Well, actually I just drill a couple holes at a time, take the roof off, put the rivet nut in, put the roof back on, Put the bolts in, drill the next hole so that the windshield kind of bends with the roof. This is going to be a pain. Dead center. Like right, I mean I drilled out a, a spot weld to put that rib nut in. Dead on perfect. So we got a few bolts in here, a few rib nuts through the uh, carbon roof and the structure. Also there's a few on the bottom here. I'm putting basically as few in as I can. I don't want to have like the rippled edge look. So the more bolts you put in, the more likely you are to have the rippled edge look. And we put the brace in between the windshield and the roof uh, in the center where we need it. And you can see, you can kind of see the razor blade mark there, but it's pretty hard to see in person. And uh, I think it's kind of, you know, worth doing it yourself for that little detriment. Overall, it came out pretty good. I'm pretty st stoked on it. The windshield looks good, uh, it fits. The roof is on, so pretty good project. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing. I'll see you next time.